I always carry a small scale with me whenever I leave the house. For example, when my daughter was born in the hospital, I brought along my scales to weigh the pasta and meals I consumed. He is Salvatore Aranzula, and in this video he'll explain his system to stay fit and age as slowly as possible. What I'm aging right now is 0.86. For those who don't know, I already interviewed Salvatore in a video two years ago that literally went viral, where he shared his journey, the behind the scenes of his life and work, and he gives me a tour of his huge house in City Life where the video enlightened me by explaining many interesting things about the systems he uses and has implemented to make his work and company efficient. Aranzula SRL bills millions every year, with an operating profit always around 80-90%, accumulating a net worth of more than 15 million euros. The Aranzula side a 90% margin. Salvatore is systematic not only in his work but in all aspects of his life, including fitness and well-being. So two years after our last meeting, I returned to his home in City Life to to make a video dedicated to his systems for keeping fit and aging slowly. Good morning again, how are you? Good. For the past six years, Salvatore has been using various systems to keep track of three main aspects, his diet, his exercise routine, and his sleep and stress levels. I for approximately six years now, I have been striving to adopt various fitness protocols in an effort to enhance the quality of life and to try to extend its duration as much as it is possible. I am fortunate enough to earn a decent amount from my job. However, you can earn all the money in the world that you desire, but if in the end you are not in good health, it fundamentally means nothing at all. Moreover, the results of these efforts are visible. In 2020, Aranzola shared a historic photo showing the public his physical transformation for the first time, going from the typical nerdy Aranzola we all remembered to a super buff Aranzola 2.0. So a few years back, I began training in a traditional gym with a personal trainer. Everything worked well for several months. Then unfortunately, I got stuck well doing a squat. I was deeply shocked and there I began to experience panic attacks, uh, you know. Anyway, I no longer wanted to return to the gym and was terrified of feeling unwell again. There was a communal gym so I started training there with a multifunction machine. The idea here is to understand these initial progressions are good but can we engineer as I did in my work the training part, the diet and everything else involved. So I began downloading meta-analyses, scientific studies or any kind of document that could be related to the gym. I dedicated myself to rigorous training and a strict diet. A few years ago I shared a photo of this transformation on Instagram. Here's the photo that charmed the whole web. Exactly. Is this the condominium gym? The condominium gym where I used to work out regularly. Eventually I built a small gym at home, which I will show you later. It allows me to do almost everything I need for my workouts. The starting points I have focused on are essentially three. One is the aspect of diet, another is the aspect of training, and the last one is the aspect of managing the training and handling stress, which is therefore connected to sleep. The very first thing that I did was to create this system to closely monitor the diet. So, to summarize. The aspects that were systematized and included in Aransula's various Excel sheets are three, diet, training, and stress. Let's start with diet. And here I must give a disclaimer. The things Aransula says work for him. He does them for himself. Neither he nor I are nutritionists, and we don't recommend you do the same. Also, many of his methods are unorthodox, and each person is different. What works for one can be harmful to another. I'm unsure about Aranzola's actions, he does it himself, it's interesting, but these are not any kind of advice. I've had a long story with my weight, always up and down. There have been times when I was very thin, times when I was quite overweight and through all these phases I always had nutritionists who helped me and who basically gave me a written diet with the quantities to eat. This stuff basically put me in quite a bit of difficulty because I was forced to eat according to the grid that was provided to me by the nutritionist even though it was varied. In the end I asked myself how do I lose weight? How do I, let's say, gain weight? It's all a matter of calories. Fundamentally, uh, we consume uh, calories that are, let's say, ingested through food. If we consume more calories than we ingest, we lose weight. If we consume exactly the same, we stay the same. If we consume more, we gain weight in a very straightforward manner. So regarding nutrition, everything began with Aranzula's aim of not having to depend on strict and rigid diets, but still being able to eat what he desired while trying to incorporate it into a more adaptable diet that would fit his lifestyle. And on how to create these systems, the inspiration came when he read a specific book. I stumbled upon this book called The Hacker's Diet, which is authored by the creator of AutoCAD. He had a significant weight issue and eventually broke it down into numbers. Essentially, he devised a system that I have replicated and somewhat improved. Each day, I wake up and weigh myself. How do you measure body fat percentage? I use a medical scale and a tanita. The scale costs around five to 600 euros. So 
So in the early morning, then I wake up, go to the bathroom, weigh myself, and, let the, and then I manually jot down my weight and fat percentage on this spreadsheet. I just take a second and practically add the calories I consumed for the day before, and I add another detail. Everything I eat, I track, I use an app, Macro Factor. Are you constant? Yes, it feels like a kind of obsession, but it brings me peace and calmness, knowing exactly what I'm eating and the calories I'm consuming each day. So the spreadsheet is very simple. Each day from the phone, he weighs himself in the morning and records it. On the column next to it are the calories he consumed the day before. And this way the sheet can relate the calories to the weight change, deducing his caloric needs. Because if he consumed X calories and lost weight, it means his needs are higher. Conversely, if he gained weight, it means his needs are lower. Aren't you afraid it isn't precise? I often wonder if the label is true. Actually, what matters is not the precision of a single value, but the trend. Labels will never be precise. The measurements you make will never be precise. For example, at home, I cook for both myself and my partner, and then we divide by weighing what we have cooked. Maybe on one side, there's a bit more or a bit less. The important thing is the trend that is not straying or deviating too much from the goal. Imagine, I even have a small scale. I'll show it to you because it can't be found anymore. A small scale I use when I go out. It's a square I always carry. It's awesome. In my pocket. Yes, by the way, this stuff is no longer on the market here. You're at the restaurant. You place it underneath, put it on top, then you tear it, eat, put it back on top, and the difference is the food you consumed. It gives you an indication of what you're consuming. So when you go to eat, do you use this? Yes. Imagine that when my daughter was born in the hospital, I had my own scale for weighing pasta and soups I ate. I usually eat at home and cook my own meals about 90% of the time. This way I know exactly what I am consuming. In 10% of cases when I go out it's better to have a rough estimate than none. So this system isn't precise to the gram or calorie, but it helps to get a general idea of Aranzula's caloric needs and how they change over time. In fact, the system doesn't relate the daily weight to the daily calories directly, but averages them to show the overall trend of Aranzula's caloric needs. The green column is what I record by hand. So the weight, fat percentage and calories. The rest is calculated automatically. I'll explain a bit about the system. It tries to understand the trend of your weight. Fundamentally, you can directly relate weight to calories because our weight is also affected by the water retention from the food we consume. If I have a pizza day eating pizza all day long, I'll have high water retention, so the weight essentially counts. So this particular system would provide data that is highly skewed and inaccurate. So what do I do in this case? I essentially smooth out this weight by using a moving exponential average. It's a statistical method to smooth out the weight a bit. So it allows you to smooth out errors fundamentally related to water. To be clear, if I ate exactly the calories shown in this column, which is the TDE, my weight would stay exactly the same. He knows your maintenance needs because he links your weight gain to the calories you consume. Right. Okay. Or the reduction of weight. Obviously, what is the added value of this stuff? Which is the brilliant Changes thing. over time. Changes over time. If you lose weight, it decreases. Exactly, but not only that. It is also linked to what I do because if I start running, at some point, I decide to change my lifestyle or become sedentary. This maintenance shifts over time. It still takes a total of 21 days gradually to adapt and avoid managing these fluctuations. The cool thing about this spreadsheet is that instead of being fixed, it adapts to Aranzula's life. He is so meticulous that every day he records his weight and calories, so we can see the history of all past years. And what happens is that it essentially allows you to manage everything. So from 2020 onwards, I have my data available. I can decide to control my weight. It fluctuated a lot. Having the numbers here lets you control and decide what you want in life. Did I want to reduce my weight? I can do it. At some point I chose to increase muscle mass. I decided to increase calories in a very controlled manner. I can do exactly the same as in these two moments when I said, look, I try to maintain or slightly increase or slightly decrease. And with numbers, you can do it. In addition to recording my weight, I also measure my body fat percentage. I used to have 16% body fat, but now I maintain it around 12 to 13%. This is somewhat the threshold where I usually keep myself and then measure the amount of lean body mass. Well, see here, it's very interesting to see that you're back to 67 kilos, which was your previous weight, but with a much lower percentage of fat mass than before. Lower than it was before. So if you look, even when I took that well-known photo, my body fat percentage was extremely low, uh, around 11. I mean, it was incredibly scenic, let's say. Uh, during the phases of maintenance, you consume precisely what you need. Actually, you can grow, but the progression is much slower than during a bulk phase. However, it's much easier to manage. As you can clearly observe, the amount of fat in absolute terms has significantly decreased from the 11.1 kilograms of fat that I had before to now having just 8.9 kilograms. I not only track calories, but also what I eat. 
How you distribute proteins, carbs and fats is crucial for the diet. So I developed a kind of tool that allows you to first determine what your goal is. It then distributes proteins, carbohydrates and fats in a balanced way. You have the option to eat to maintain your weight, you can choose to lose weight or you can decide to gain weight. There are certain ranges or percentages of weight gain for which you might decide for instance to lose some weight. The percentage that I have observed to be effective for me which is also supported by scientific literature is 0.5 percent per week otherwise too fast exact for example now that i am at a normal weight the maximum percentage that is worth losing weight is 0.5 for instance, you set a target, I am 5 feet 7 inches tall and aim to achieve 12% body fat. The system tells me it takes 3 weeks and you need to eat these calories with this deficit. It also distributes proteins, carbs and fats. This distribution is designed for an individual who trains with weights and engages in 4 or 5 workout sessions each week. Naturally thoughtful decisions are made. You eat quality food, you don't eat a cheesecake that covers 1700 calcal. Very good, you obviously want us to make sense. I try to eat at least a pound of fruits and vegetables every day. But let's say from a purely numerical and mathematical standpoint, if one ate these things, they would achieve their desired goal and you can see it clearly in the numbers if you want to gain or lose weight. What about micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. Do you take supplements? Personally, I usually take protein powder supplements whenever I find myself unable to meet my daily nutritional target. Then I take creatine, which helps improve performance at the gym, and also a multivitamin. During fall and winter, I take vitamin D. Since we were talking about supplements, even if unrelated, I thought about the issue of pollution. I know Milan is known for being a polluted city, so I asked Aranzula how he dealt with this problem, and of course, he had the solution for Milan's air quality. Do you do anything? I also have data on the air quality in my home. We have a dual air exchange system. This is the condominium. Essentially around 80% of the air volume in the rooms is exchanged and filtered thoroughly. There are filters that roughly filter out 60% of the fine dust particles from outside, thereby improving the air quality inside the house compared to the outside environment. Naturally, we are always in Milan, however in the master bedroom. Look, look here, for instance, right now PM10 and PM2.5 are zero because it has been raining these past few days. In short, Salvatore Aranzula is attentive to everything, especially his safety, and do you know who else cares about your safety? You already know, NordVPN, our ally for cybersecurity. You might say, what does this have to do with anything, Marcello? And no, even Salvatore Aranzula has penned a blog post about NordVPN, detailing how incredibly useful it is for finding our IP address when abroad. But not only that, there are many other features, like threat protection and MeshNet. He explained everything in his article and also did a tutorial on how to use it on both phone and computer. Additionally, NordVPN servers are the fastest, so our browsing is generally not slowed down. They also have a no-log policy, meaning our data is not stored by NordVPN. I made a video about NordVPN, infiltrated the company, explained everything, and talked to the staff. Go watch it. Moreover, this is NordVPN's 12th birthday, so I am leaving a fantastic and wonderful offer in the description with my link. Just click it and get a few months free on a two-year plan, satisfied or refunded. Now, back to the video. Alright, let's continue. Before going to the gym and talking about the workout, let's discuss stress and sleep instead. To monitor this, Aransula uses the Aura Ring, which many of my friends also use. I can't keep it on, but I'll try again. It tracks your sleep and other vital data. Did you talk about stress? So I use it during the night. Now I have placed it here in the daytime to show you all this ring, the Aura Ring. A ring that I wear for a night measures several vital parameters such as the amount of sleep. One of the parameters that the Aura Ring measures very reliably is called heart rate variability. Essentially the beats, the frequency of our heartbeats are not constant. This measurement of variability can be interpreted as a kind of measure of resilience, a way to gauge how well you can bounce back, a measure of how your body is reacting to stress, both physical and mental, in various situations. So Aaron Zula uses the Aura Ring mainly for a data point he cares about, HRV, which is heart rate variability, that correlates with stress levels. The more stressed he is, the higher this variability. By tracking it daily, he can see his stress level and act accordingly, for instance, by making adjustments, training more gently or ensuring better sleep in the future. What do I do every single morning? I manually copy the value shown by the Aura Ring. Have you been doing this thing since 2019? Yes, I have historic info on everything. But when you add data, must you go down? Yes, just go down and scroll. Google Sheets saves the last cell you worked on. The chart is quite useful. For instance, these are the last two months. Let's look at the last year. 
if you see there has been a tendency to go down this is the time when my daughter was born so we were at the hospital then we came back home and there was a huge disaster from august onward if you look from here it tends to go downward this stuff here coincided with the start of a new work project that is stressing me out quite a bit so we are in this period where this stuff tends to go down and so what do i personally do i use this value here to understand how stressed i am and how i am actually reacting to this stress because one can be very stressed but still manage so i also use it as a parameter to decide whether to slow down a bit at work and in my training all right let's move on to the third key aspect training he trains four times a week monday tuesday thursday and friday Friday at 11 in the morning. Basically, the training is based on four days each week. We have an upper lower training split, meaning the first day I train the lower body, the second day I train the upper body, then a rest day, and it starts over again. Do you do Monday, Tuesday? Thursday and Friday. From 11 to 12, that's when I work out. Doesn't that break your morning? No, because I start working very early, so as soon as I wake up, I start working. If I wake up at 6.30, I am working at 6.30. If I wake up at 5.00, then I start at 5. No breakfast? I start working, have breakfast right away, but really fast. I prepare it the night before. Then about three hours later, I do my workout. Okay, so at 11, you start your training and then head straight to lunch, right? Yes, lunch is essentially post-workout food. And in fact, I eat four times a day. So I eat breakfast, lunch, an afternoon snack and dinner. The exercises are always the same. Squat, Romanian deadlift, leg extension, leg curl for your legs workout. For the upper body, there's the bench press, rowing, the crosses, lat machine, lateral races and two more exercises one for triceps and the other for biceps so a very straightforward and simple plan i train then start again with the first exercise the system tells me the weight i should use the weight is automatically generated based on the weight i have used before the main goal is to attempt to maintain the initial repetition with a weight that is approximately 83 percent of the maximum capacity i enter the values and the system calculates how many sets i need to do and this is because while I fill out the plan, while I'm training, it calculates what I call effective reps. Because when you engage in training, if you train very close to muscle failure, there are scientific studies that indicate it's not a strict rule in this regard. But many studies that I agree with say you can manage to do a maximum of five effective repetitions if you take a set to muscle failure. So if you do 10 reps, 10 in a specific exercise, the 10th is really to exhaustion. Actually, of those 10, it's like you did practically up to a maximum of five. Uh, because the first five don't count. Because they are too easy. So what I do here is try to maximize to make the most efficient use of my time. Use a percentage of my maximum capacity that is quite high, around 83% to reduce idle time significantly. I mean, to not make junk, what's it called? Junk hole. Everything is done automatically by the system. For example, on a template in Google Sheets, there's a function that lets you create scripts in JavaScript. I have created some functions in JavaScript that let's say enhance what is essentially my spreadsheet for calculations. So in reality, I have a series of functions that don't exist on Google Sheets, like the one that calculates volume and actual repetitions, volume, etc. To summarize, he trains four times a week, twice for the upper body and twice for the lower body, so the chest and legs. His training isn't fixed, but he has created a small program in Excel that adapts the workout based on his progressions, his stress level, and how hard he wants to work out, based on many other factors, and he does this by calculating the effective repetitions. He doesn't perform all of these exercises in a public gym nor even in the gym of his condominium he does them in the small home gym that he has built in his own house therefore let's go and take a look at it so it's 11 o'clock so technically now you're supposed to train i won't train today ah uh, today is the day off perfect um i'll show you how the gym functions here he mainly uses three tools, the Unica by Techno Gym, which lets him do a bit of everything, the Vitruvian and the Concept 2 bike invented by the rowing machine creators. This is the Unica, the historic machine of Techno Gym that lets you do a bit of all. Personally, I make use of it for the rowing part, for instance, to perform exercises that involve rowing movements. The lat machine part allows him to perform a whole series of exercises. Then I use it for leg extensions and leg curls because it allows you to do a bit of everything. It's a rather large and cumbersome machine and to be honest I am not sure if, looking back after many years, I would choose to buy it again. What's the alternative? The alternative in my opinion is the Vitruvian. This machine was created by an Australian startup. I was the first to buy it in Italy and Europe. 
What's the difference between the two? The Unica is a classic machine with weight stacks. This one, however, is a fully functional computer. Here you have an application with which you can decide the weight you need to use during cable exercises. For instance, you need 20 kilograms for each cable exercise. This is a device that weighs just under 30 kilos and operates with two internal motors. These motors pull only the cords, which are essentially these, and they apply resistance that is opposite to what you're applying to help you achieve the weight that you have set within the application. So the advantage is that it is an extremely compact device. With the Unica, you get more or less the same benefits. The issue is that, for instance, the weight stack of the machine operates in 5 kilogram increments. Therefore, you can use 5 or 10 kilograms, but you are unable to make progress in smaller steps. I purchased this gadget that allows you to increase the weight, so you can add the weight here. I aim to make it 15 kilos, but let's say I don't need an extra kilo and 25 grams and I can add it. Another significant problem for me is the 90 kilogram weight pack. If you must lift 150 kilos, you can't. You can't do it. Vitruvian can endure a weight of 200 kilograms. Possibly the best purchase ever despite its looks. This bike by Concept2 is quite affordable. Concept2 is the company founded by two brothers who were Olympic athletes. They invented the rowing machine with an air resistance mechanism. This motor works by drawing in air as you pedal, creating resistance. Through this damper, you can increase or decrease the amount of air that enters, thereby adjusting resistance and thus increase or decrease the resistance. This company produces only three main products. First, the rower, which is truly spectacular. Second, the ski erg, a device that allows you to simulate skiing. And finally, the bike. I personally chose the bike, specifically called the bike erg, because it allows you to exercise without much thought. I do half an hour on Tuesday, half an hour on Friday. I put on the heart rate monitor and try to stay in zone two. I am noticing that in the cardio vascular area I have changed significantly. Perhaps the most crucial aspect is cardio training, so having a heart that functions well is essential. It is quite tedious to stay there, obviously. Don't you enjoy running? I don't like it. Let's start with the Vitruvian. I'll show you the bench, I'll show you how I do it. Keep in mind the first three reps are without weight, they just help understand the movement. If you go out of the range of motion from the fourth repetition on, the system dumps you. So you know when you get out of the movement? Exactly. Yeah, it's really a safety issue. So this one is practically without weight. Just to see the movement, same thing here. The third rep is when the system starts to load a little bit of weight. Now the system begins to load the weight properly. And when you're done, you record your results on the phone. Yes, the cool thing is that when you go out of the movement range, it unloads. What I usually do on my tablet is to input the total number of repetitions I have completed. Let's say I did seven repetitions. Do you do it each time or after training? continuously. The system is reactive. See here. It starts empty, enter 7, it calculates and tells you to do another series. But if you happen to do 5, the system will calculate and inform you that you need to do one more. Then, if you do another 5, the system will say, okay, you still need to do one more. Well, considering everything, do all these systems that Aranzula uses actually work or not? Well, even here, he employs methods that are quite scientific. His goal is to slow down the aging process, not just to be in shape. So he did a test to calculate his biological age. But surprisingly, the test reveals that Aranzula is actually three or four years older than his biological age. How come? It's an indicator created by True Diagnostic that tells you what your biological age is. Actually, the indicator is what they call OMI Chem Age developed with Harvard, but it lacks scientific validity. This test essentially indicates that my chronological age is 33 years and 93, but in reality, it is as if I am 37 years. This stuff should be taken with a grain of salt because this analysis is done by taking some components of the blood test. So some components are selected, a weight is assigned to these parts and a value is then derived. I have ulcerative colitis which is a significant autoimmune disease that I manage using an immunosuppressant medication. An immunosuppressant suppresses the functioning of the immune system so some components are necessarily suppressed. For example, my white blood cells are very low because if I had high white blood cells and thus a functioning immune system, my body would attack my intestines due to ulcerative colitis. That's why this indicator should be taken with a grain of salt because if you take white blood cells and give them weight and mine are essentially low because I have a drug that keeps them low, in reality I go from 34 years to 37 years. This report arrived just a few days ago, providing a true scientific indicator that clearly tells you how much you are practically aging over time. 
the value used by Brian Johnson. And how are you getting older? In a single calendar year, I age like 0.86. And from there, we kept talking about aging. He explained how there's a community of wealthy people who even hold Olympics for those who age the slowest. There are many special techniques. He also mentioned Brian Johnson, an entrepreneur who sold his company for 800 million and has dedicated his life to understanding how to age slowly. He is dedicating his life to understanding how to age as slowly as possible. And he's documenting it all like a YouTuber on his channel. Brian Johnson started at 0.8 and he reached 0.69. Brian Johnson is a madman. Not everything he does works, but many of the things he says are true and provable. And think about it, I came prepared on this topic. I've been interested in aging since I was 18. In the year 2016, he released a video titled The End of Aging, where I discuss a book named Ending Aging, authored by Aubrey de Grey, who is one of the earliest thinkers and scientists on this topic. After Aubrey de Grey, there was the trend of David Sinclair, also very famous in this field. And recently, there's been more talk about Brian Johnson. I believe this will become a more popular topic in the future. And I took the chance to test my biological age because I was curious so I did it. Today we can do this, estimating biological age through different models, estimating biological age through microbiota analysis, genetic epigenetic alterations, and other models validated by scientific evidence. Tell me how my test went. I'll show you, I'll show you right away. We have a chronological age of 26.4 years and an estimated biological age of 36.5 years. 10 more years? Apparently, yes, I knew I needed to get in shape. It was my goal this year. I mentioned it in the yearly recap video, but I didn't expect such a high number 10 years. Since we also assess the lipid profile or the glucose profile and thus cholesterol in a very straightforward manner, it is quite likely that a period of extensive fat consumption might have altered some indicators. It doesn't mean these can induce an alteration in biological age. I've put on some weight. That's the summary you all mentioned. Certainly. What emerged from the blood test is that there are lipid profile alterations. It seems that eating that out is, for breakfast, lunch and dinner all year long didn't help me at all. You come from a time where you have eaten quite a lot, especially foods rich in fats, or you have a chronic condition mainly affecting those who are overweight. How to lower biological age? Through various factors on an individual level lifestyle. A diet such as pescatarian Mediterranean combined with intermittent fasting can be beneficial for reducing biological age. In particular, clearly reduce and avoid alcohol, cut down smoking, practically no nicotine. And then other important factors are physical activity, which greatly impacts one of the pillars of healthy aging. And then also sleep. These are the three most important elements. Okay, maybe it's the stress too. Stress? Absolutely yes. Stress indirectly correlates with some with markers. With the fat and with the cholesterol. Exactly. And other markers, especially inflammatory ones. Chronic low-grade inflammation can greatly increase biological age. But who is Nicola to tell me this? Personally, I am the director of the E.ON Foundation. The foundation is based in Brussels and we carry out this activity with the world's top experts, researchers and clinicians. Research activities in the field of medicine and longevity. Our main goal is very simple, to promote longevity medicine from the perspective of scientific research, as it is a relatively young science, and particularly the promotion of healthy lifestyles. Returning to me, the test I took does nothing but take my blood tests, and apparently with artificial intelligence, the test is of deep longevity, I think it simply does the percentile. So it compares my values to those of all other people my age or something like that. The analyses I did aren't that bad, I'll show them to a doctor, and my goal to get back in shape is confirmed. But guys, don't obsess, especially with these tests that aren't always reliable and should be taken with caution. If anything comes from those analyses, it's that I need to eat better. I'll update you in my vlogs on my journey to get back in shape and maybe on what the doctor says, though one should never fall into hypochondria. Even so, doing this test now has made me curious. How accurate is this test? What are the scientific proofs? Regarding what Brian Johnson does, how many things work and how many don't. I really need to make a video about it, so I will. As for the rest, what Aranzula does seems exactly in his spirit. Checking things in minute detail. I must say, it made me want to do it too. I would never weigh myself daily or count calories every day, but maybe something more functional for my life, I might do it. I'll update you in my weekly vlog. Let me know what you think in a comment. I hope this video was interesting. Again, this is not a guide. Please, don't self-diagnose anything. Don't do strange things. At your own risk, you might be in trouble. We'll see you in the next video soon.